What's going on? I have no idea who these people are. The dead man, Gabriel. <laughs> Wherever you go, I'll find you. What would you do for me, Gable? So the control room, the mm -hmm. first three episodes, I mean, there were three episodes. It was really, really intense and gripping. Mm. What made you say yes to the role of Gabe? Um, lots of different things. I think, uh, Initially, when I read it, uh, the it was just as I think gripping on the page as it, as as it will be with people on the screen. It was like a real page turner, and I was uh, I had palpitations for days afterwards. I think it was just, <laughs> and um, it's just it, there's no it, Nick doesn't leave much time to, to even breathe in between. It's just relentless, and he's a great thriller writer, but at the same time he. Um, he, he, he's, I think he, he, I think he's a bit of a romantic as well. Yeah. Uh, and at the core of the story is a is is a love story, which is extremely, it's a very um, complex one. But I think there's facets in there that are relatable to I will be relatable to everyone in different ways in varying degrees. Um, so the marrying of those two things I thought was really cool. And 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 also lastly, I think the thing was that um the character of Gabe is he I mean that was the thing that, that probably attracted me most, but he is a you always have to say this kind of in invert commas of he's an ordinary guy. Yeah. But he has he is put into extraordinary circumstances. Definitely. well out of his seeming capabilities and I was really interested to do a type of thriller that sh hopefully tried to go towards the reality of what someone like him who's thrust into a world like that and a set of circumstances like that what what would really happen to his psyche because for me the instant thing I thought was well I'd have a panic attack you know yeah. Breakdown. It was so cool to see. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Well, that was part of it. You need to just close the curtains and just sit in a room and <laughs> shiver for three days and go, "How the I Yeah. You know, it's uh, that's what I would be like. I mean, I get nervous when the police walk by me in the street. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, all those things. All so those things. What was it like to shoot that with all that intensity and like all that build up. What was it like shooting that? Um. Actually, the shooting of it's quite different because it's all very we shot a lot of in episode one if we can do spoilers the chase scene in episode one we shot over the whole shoot really in different periods I think on the first day we shot some of it and then three were audibly because it was all in different locations and we had to use someone kind of a green screen thing and and uh and so it was very bitty up so it just we had to prepare a lot beforehand and say do you, I'm, I'm going to do this. Is that okay? <laughs> object, raise your objections now because once it's set in place, um, can't go back. And um, yeah, so they're not as I don't find those things as fun to film. Really. Okay, but it was yeah. it was definitely different watching that back for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it's different. It's weird to watch things back anyway. But um, when you watch something like that back all in order, it's uh, yeah, interesting. One of my favourite things about you is your incredible depth and range when you act. Um, like, mm. incredible depth and range to your emotions as well. How was it like to tap into those emotions for this role? That's really nice um, to say. Um, uh, I, I, I enjoy that kind of stuff, actually. I prefer it. I prefer it when someone is pushed to the extremities of... of uh, of emotions, I think, I, you know, as an actor, it's just fun. I mean, there's a thin line between it becoming um, uh, uh, melodramatic, which I'm always conscious of. But I, 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 I like doing that stuff. I like seeing how far I can push it and teetering on that line. I that that's where I feel most comfortable. Weirdly enough, you know, it kind of reminded me of. Um, sorry to dip into agents for sure, but it kind of reminded me of you know when you were playing. Dr. Fitz and you were dark and then you started to realise that you were, like you had a spit in Psyche and it, that kind of breakdown yeah. was very similar in, in, in tone. So I was like, this oh, is cool. so interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I mean, you know, you take, you do take 
sometimes you do i've had lots of times that you kind of this role in a lot of ways was really it's funny because i was just talking to someone in an interview and they said they talked to the nick they'd done an interview with nick beforehand and he had said that he which i kind of knew but i didn't know completely but he wrote it with me in mind which was really lovely and and i i go well god that's why i guess part of the reason i read it is like it was an amalgamation of all the things a lot of things that i relate to personally but also as a character that uh uh i feel like i've had most enjoyment doing and um and it was funny that because i think sometimes you uh, you can um experiment with something in 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 one character and you grasp a idea of something and then when you go on and you have a, a character that has a similar set scenario or set of circumstances you already have this kind of thing that you've cooked a little bit and then you put the icing on top uh like the flooring yeah we're talking about cakes now yeah oh. <laughs> <laughs> um what do you think makes gabe so loyal to sam cuz she's damaged but she's a little bit you know unlikable sometimes so mm. What do you think it is that makes him so loyal and so loving towards her, despite the fact that they've had such a break? Yeah, I mean, I think she's on. I think you could say she was unlikable just because what she does. But I, I guess when you look into the reasons why you do that, I think you start to feel like, oh God, she was in a, she was put very much in a difficult position. And I, I think what I think the thing about the two of them is they have this uh unspeakable and also unbreakable bond even after all these years of not seeing each other it's kind of as strong as ever and um uh and i guess the same way that gabe takes that first plunge into stealing taking the van for her the same way as i think she had a similar scenario when she had to phone gabe that time you know she was like i'm i'm in a I'm trapped in a corner and there's only one person I can think that will help me. Um and and that's you know that's what I really like about these thrillers about thrillers like this. I was just talking about someone of one of the films that we um one of the films I watched before this which I'd watched when I was younger was this French film called Tell No One. Have you seen that one? No, I haven't. Oh, it's really I would re I really recommend it. It's really good. Um and a really I, I, I it's just one of those very stirring yeah. films and it tugs at you in a certain way and um the, the i guess the impetus behind it is how far will someone go for someone they love yeah which who who i would who couldn't kind of relate to that in some way or another um and it's something that always yeah just pulls at me that idea and it'll, it'll get me and I and um and I think they both we, we see that from both Sam and Gabe yeah. in the story I think especially towards the end with like you start thinking that Gabe is giving and giving and giving a lot but yeah to the end, Sam does something and you're like oh, yeah you do yeah care. you do there is something there for you yeah and actually like their their bond is so it's kind of fucked up and complex and very multi-layered and you, you teeter between what kind of what what category you put it in yeah. <laughs> i think and that's okay that's cool i think they do as well and i think that shifts and and um distorts throughout the story and uh that was one that was something i re that was something i really um enjoyed about it. and that was there from the first inception of the the scripts and also Joe who came in and played Sam captured that really well this this kind of this uh pull between the two of them but also there's a distance and there's they're very different people and they have this shared history and all these different things swirling around I'm going to go skipping slightly down spoiler lane but all mm -hmm. of the coming is going to be published after the finale's air, so oh, okay um how do you think Gabe feels, or what do you think is going through his mind when he finds out that Sam has lied to him about the dead body? Because my mind, I was like, why didn't you check the van? I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, I know. I think the same thing. I think it's kind of like, 
I I think his thing behind it was thinking, I don't want, maybe if I don't see this thing, I think maybe a little part was like, I, I'm, I'm not involved in that yeah. way. I'm just getting rid of this fucking man. Um, but yeah, when that moment happens, when he finds out, I mean, it's just heartbreaking. I remember reading that in the script of just thinking, you know, and I didn't, you know, first time I read it, I had no idea it was going to end. And of course, straight away feeling a, a huge degree of anger towards mm. Sam as well. And, and uh, that twist is a great, uh, was a really cool twist, I thought. I mean, there's no other way. You don't really have to do much there mm. uh, as an actor, I don't think of. If somebody's watched it to that point, I hope they're following the story to the point where it's like it's enough just to find out she's done that. There's not much. There's not much um, ability needed to portray or to get across that this is this is fucked messed up. up. It's so messed up. Yeah. Um, obviously, we find out that uh, it was a fire in the Christmas tree farm, and Sam was responsible. And in mm. that fire, Robert's dad passes away. I just wondered how you thought that event and, and Gabe covering up for Sam at the time, how you feel like it manifested in their adult life? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of guilt uh, guilt in uh, in Gabe and also a lot of, there's a thing of, have I done the right thing? Mm. And I think, you know, part of jumping into the narrative that he does is trying to correct wrongs from the past um uh um and i think with the stuff i think a big part of what we talked about beforehand was the the uh the loss of his mother and how how big uh how much that shaped him as a person actually the 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 fact that he's never He's never properly come to terms with it. It's been a kind of unspoken tragedy in his life. And Sam was this one person who had a similar experience and they never had to talk about it. But they were both these, I guess, in the town they lived in, these kind of pariahs. Yeah. And weirdly, after something like that, and they found, they found, a re, they found, uh, they found um, solace in each other and a, massive way and so when he loses sam as well when he's a when he's a young boy and i think that's why when we find him at the start we were quite keen to show amy and i were quite keen to show that this is a guy who it's not like he's living a happy life and suddenly he gets boom he's not living a good life already you know he doesn't have much to lose say again sorry Kind of just existing at that point in the beginning. exact yeah that's a perfect way to put it yeah yes he he's just like there's no joy in his life it's just kind of coasting through not a, he, he's he, i think he's crafted a little comfortable world for himself that he can exist in uh that has no that he doesn't have to um he doesn't have to test himself and he doesn't have to confront his past yeah. you know just like i'll just i'll just get by um I've kind of gone on a bit of a tangent now. I'm not sure where I'm going. <laughs> it's all right. I got the, I got the gist. Um, yeah, good. I mean, this was pretty much a closed-ended story, but do you think there's potential for a season two? Would you like to see a season two? I'd love to see season two. I think, I think, I think if you're doing a season two, it would be cool to do it with a whole new cast of people. Yeah. Maybe even a police one or a control room or, you know. Yeah. A, and I'm a fire, um, fire, is there a fire control? I guess there must be, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, change the setting, change the setting. Change, I, you know, I think something like that would be pretty cool. Um, I think, I think sometimes it's like, uh, it would be cool. I always would like to go back to characters in a certain, uh, in a certain way, but I also, the objective part of me thinks, oh, but it, it's good to sometimes leave them where they're at. And- um, No, I agree, no, I agree. Yeah. Um, I'm just conscious of time, so I'm going to try and jam in a few. Cool. It, it might seem a bit random, but there's, there's Go for it. my madness. Um, um, if you had the chance to return to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, would you like to? And if so, how would you like to see that be shaped? Um, I think 
I, I would say probably no. And I'd say and not that I didn't have a fantastic time doing it. I would just say, I think like the last question, I w they left after everything that happened to those two characters, they really gave them a happy ending. Yeah. And, um, and I think it would be so sad to, <laughs> to mess with that again. Yeah, it's not fair. No, it's I mean, almost too cruel. Like seven seasons of messing with their lives. Like, yeah, I'm not, so. I'm not sure they would survive this time. So I like the idea that they're living, um, they're living a life and um, of normality outside of the, the shield. Do you feel like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there's been like rumours about it not being canon, it being canon. Do you think it exists somewhere in the MCU multiverse? What does canon, what does canon mean? So like it's part of the official MCU universe as opposed to like a side kind of show. And oh, I'm, okay. It's not only canon, it's definitely part of the universe. I mean, I'm I'm probably not the person that says, I would say you might, I'd say you might have to because I think the original conception of the show was the fact that um, Coulson had come from come from the Avengers, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Oh, I was coming in there. Um, yeah, I think you would kind of have to say it as canon. Canon is that it's part of it, right? Yeah, official. Okay, what does canon, why canon? What does that mean? I have no idea where it came from. <laughs> from the band mic and I was like, okay, cool. We'll, we'll use this word. We'll use this term. Okay. Um, really randomly, in my research of you this morning, I found out that you were in Coronation Street and you were, who did you play? Um, Adam Barlow. All right, yeah. Do you remember any of that? Did that yeah. <laughs> was that yeah, like the first real roles or? Um, I guess kind of, I've done a few things. When I was younger, I kind of went along to a drama class and I guess someone saw me and cast me in a couple of things and then that happened. I, I can I can remember I can remember a little bit of the experience. Like I can remember my first day there and that's about it. Uh and I, yeah, another bit. And I remember some of the people there, some the people there were really lovely to me and stuff. Um but I in terms of the acting and stuff, I I don't think I really understood what that was back then. You know. Yeah. Just, yeah. And so um, it was a cool experience to be that age and do something like that. But um, it's such a it's such a watch, it's such a heavily watched show that I remember I did it and I didn't realize and I was just out in town with my mates the next day and people were coming up to me in the street and it was quite jarring. It was quite, um, yeah. I remember it was quite scary at the time because it was like, a, you didn't re I didn't realize the pull that that mm. show had though it's, it's i guess it's more watched than most shows i would say isn't it probably oh yeah it's one of the top soaps in the uk wow yeah. um yeah. but how how long would you say it took you to kind of get used to fame or being recognized then um i don't know it's not too crazy for me to be honest uh, and uh really what happens to me is i've been quite fortunate that i've mostly played characters with a much sturdier and um, enviable moral compass than I do. Okay. So a lot of the time people come up to me and, and um, in the street and they're just like, oh, you know, I really enjoyed that character and stuff. And that's, I really, that's a, I mean, it's a really lovely thing to have somebody come up and just appreciate something you've been in. So I'm lucky I have, that's when I have it, that's the kind of thing I have. But, but a lot of the time, you know, I'm still, I'm, I'm still very anonymous, so um, I wouldn't, I would, I think, careful what you wish for. I, have, I guess I have friends who have have been or are at stages of it where it's a bit more consuming mm. and um, it's not always as fun as you would think. Yeah, no, I yeah. can imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's next for you and what would be your dream role? Brewing just now, perhaps, but I, I don't think I could talk about it, unfortunately. Oh, sorry. Um, just cut out then. I completely missed the. Uh, what? <laughs> um, what would be a dream role? I don't know. I feel like I've done some of them already. I feel like I'm just on. Yeah, everything's just a bonus now. Um, I'd love to do something like. I mean, I like do. I, I, I guess just for the fun of it some you know some kind of cool action sci-fi film or something oh yeah just because i just because i think it'd be quite fun but i guess i kind of had that with marvel to a certain extent so yeah there's nothing there's nothing left no that's not true we no need... I, i'm sure i'll think of something soon <laughs> enough 
as soon as we finish. Um, so the character Anthony is really intimidating in the control room. Yeah. Um, and he's so different to his character on Game of Thrones, Podrick. He was like so lovely, so nice. What yeah. would you like to work with Daniel Portman? He's awesome. He's a... Uh... I feel like Dad's just one of those people that's like got effortless charisma. Yeah. He doesn't do he doesn't need to do much and he's just cool. He's just got a coolness about him. Which is really annoying actually. I actually I don't like the guy. Makes you work hard, huh? <laughs> yeah. No, he's great. And um he also does he's one of those people he, he is actually really annoying because he's just good and he doesn't need to work too hard to do it. Yeah. Everyone else is like slaving at the side, going hard and he's just like comes in and he just and he does it great first time. Um, yeah, he's very talented. And also just a really, he's a very, very down to earth uh, person and he, he'll get on with anyone. And so, and actually he was really, um, he was really supportive of me actually when we were filming. Cause it was, um, there was times of it that it was a bit daunting cause, because it was every scene and so much of it was through Gabe's POV. I don't think I'd done something quite that heavy that shoot before, and um, yeah, he was very supportive of me. Oh, that's nice. It's nice that yeah, you. he's. A, but I mean, that's why you'd say he's even a. He's a. You would know he's such a good actor because he's nothing like that Anthony character. He's a real arsehole, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. He was very manipulative right from the get go. Yeah, yeah, charming. Yeah, <laughs> the dickhead. Bit, bit too oily. <laughs> bit too oily, yeah. Um, what do you think the future holds for Sam and Gabe? Um, I don't know. It's a good question. I, I, if, if we're doing, if we can do spoilers, I guess the way I viewed it at the end was that perhaps they will be more friends than that, that, that there's a, a closeness between them but it doesn't have to be romantic um, and that actually perhaps in the real world they might not be the perfect match but they might be a perfect match in a different way yeah I, I see um, what you mean it's like there's a very strong intimacy between them but it's not yeah. necessarily a romantic one um, yeah it's like you said earlier, it's like everything all in one. There's a little bit of everything in their relationship that makes it so strong and mm -hmm. independent almost. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. And um, and also, I just think they probably need to, they probably would need to sort their own lives out before they um, enter into any sort of relationship anyway. Oh, for sure. They're such messes. God, <laughs> such messes. Um, I guess I'm really... Um, taking the, the time because I'm like oh. I've got time don't worry <laughs> um there's a moment where Sam calls Gabe a guilty pleasure kind of guy what does she mean by that what do you think she's trying to imply a guilty pleasure kind of guy oh um if I remember right <laughs> yeah if I remember right I think it's a scene where um Gabe talks about how his relationships in the past a lot of people mm. um have preferred to keep them secret yeah and um, uh, I think that's where that line comes from. You're a guilty pleasure kind of guy, isn't it? I don't know. What does guilty, guilty pleasure kind of guy, what would you insinuate that would I, mean for me? I didn't get that from what he was saying. Well, from what he was saying and explaining to her, I wasn't like, oh, that's a guilty pleasure. Like a guilty pleasure is like, oh, it's a cheeky something that you have. It's nice. It's Yeah, maybe like a boy, like a bad boy. Yeah. He's not a bad boy, is he? Like... But maybe it's just because people know that he is... Yeah, I don't know. That's a good point, actually. But maybe it's because people know that he's he's so you're never going to penetrate. Like, oh, that sounds a bit. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, but you know what I mean. You're never going to break that uh, wall down with him. So yeah. it's just a bit of fun. He's got himself together. He's like a little bit closed. Yeah, either that or she's mocking him because he is so not a guilty pleasure kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, he's sweet. He's like him. Be rude to Gabe. Thanks. Um, there's that really lovely scene that Gabe has with his dad at the end where they kind of reconcile after all, so many years of being estranged. Mm -hmm. um, 
what was it like to film that scene? Because it was quite emotionally tense. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, Stuart Bowman, uh, who played my dad, he's just, he's just brilliant. And um, we had lots of chats before about that and he, a relationship and he brought a lot, he brought loads to it. Because ultimately, I guess what's happened between them is when Gabe lost his mother and when his dad lost his wife, mm. especially at that time period and Scottish males, the, you know, there was so much that was left unspoken. And it's all, there's this ghost in the house um, come at, you know, that permeates everywhere and, and their relationship has become almost, um, almost kind of non-existent. They just, like, or Gabe especially just avoids him because it's easier. Um, so I love that. I really, I, I really, really loved that that ending actually. And when we were filming it, um, we it wasn't in the script. There was a hug. It just kind of was like he ends up at the door. And Amy, the director, Amy Neil, she she said, uh, "I've been thinking about having a hug." And immediately we were like, "No, <laughs> no, no, we're not doing that." And she was like, "We try it," and. Um, and we did it, and then on that take, the door closes, but it was, um, nobody was behind the door. A gust of wind came in and closed the door by itself, which was quite spooky. Well, it was kind of like the mum, you know, the ghost of their mum closing the door behind them and saying, yeah, you know, sort this out. Um, but it was spooky, and, and we did it, and I said to him afterwards, she was like, do you, do you see the door close? She's like, yeah, and I was like, well, you've got to keep that one in. She was like, yeah, we'll see. So I was glad you did. It's really weird that you said that you weren't expecting a hug because I was definitely expecting a hug. When he stands, I'm like, go on, hu hug, do it. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, I think there's a, even, I mean, maybe it's just there's that male Scotchness even still, as soon as they said that, I was like, that's too melodramatic. Wouldn't do that, that's too much. Do you too think much. it's then important to see that kind of dynamic between males on screen? Yeah normalize it a bit maybe or make you more comfortable with it yeah definitely definitely is of course it is that's something that's always a good thing i mean just depending on the context of it I, I, um i guess but we we i think we played it so long that they had such a fractured relationship that i'm glad you felt that way at the end of like you kind of you know rather than the end is I want him to kiss the girl. It's like I want him to hug his dad, um, and I'm glad. That, I'm glad you said you felt like that because uh, you know that is that is, I guess, what we were going for.